Good evening. The doors of St. Alfred Parish are open wide to welcome each and every one with a special acknowledgement to all who are visiting our parish community. During this prayerful time, together may we encounter Jesus and experience the joy of his presence. Now that we are open to full capacity, we would like to welcome home to Mass all those parishioners who have attended Mass by live stream. St. Al Alfred Church is a safe environment to worship God and to encounter the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. It is here in person that we recognize the Lord and receive hope and healing. As of March 1st, capacity limits in all indoor public settings have been lifted. Masking requirements will be lifted for all public spaces on Monday, March 21st. However, we still encourage everyone to wear a mask. For those who are sick, have a compromised immune system, or feel uncomfortable returning to church at this time, the dispensation for Sunday Mass remains. All Masses are available via live stream. The last Synod listening session will take place on Tuesday, April the 5th at 6 p.m. Please call the office to register. Eucharistic ministers are needed for the liturgical celebrations during Holy Week. Please check the sheets in the Eucharistic minister's room and sign up for the Mass that is most convenient for you. Everyone's help is needed. Please, <clears throat> please choose a date and time before April the 10th. Thank you. On Saturday, April the 2nd, in every parish across the diocese, a priest will be available from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to hear individual confessions. There will also be Eucharistic adoration during this time. No matter how long it has been, you are welcome to celebrate the sacrament of penance. Or you can also simply come to pray before the Lord. Next Sunday is Solidarity Sunday, the annual collection for development and peace. If you use envelopes, there is one available in your envelope box. If you do not, there are envelopes available at the entrances of the church. Please give from your heart. Catholics across the country are invited to join in collective prayer as a delegation of indigenous survivors, elders, knowledge keepers, and young people travel to Rome to meet with Pope Francis from March 28 to April the 1st. The journey, organized by the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops, represents an important moment in the ongoing journey of healing and reconciliation. As announced in October of 2021, the delegation will also help inform the planned pilgrimage of the Holy Father to Canada at a future date. For more information, please visit www.ccb.ca. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. This fourth Sunday of Lent calls us to rejoice, and we hear profound reasons for rejoicing in the story of the prodigal son. We may make life choices that cause us great pain, but God is always there, waiting, ready to forgive and embrace us. How deep is God's mercy? How long has it been offered to God's people? We hear in today's readings 
that the only limits are ours if we choose not to accept the possibilities for newness that await us, always and ever. Our celebrant today is Father Hugh. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Good evening, everyone. My sisters and brothers in Christ, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first of all pause and call to mind our sins.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. While the children of Israel were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover. In the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the children of Israel no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, 
In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. I will rise and go to my Father and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. The young man would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have enough bread and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. 
Then the elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. And good evening also to those who are watching online. Tonight's readings are about reconciliation, specifically reconciliation with God. Not surprising for today, we celebrate Letary Sunday, a break in Lent, a day of rejoicing in God's love for us. In the first reading, Joshua tells of a new beginning for the children of Israel after God has led them to the promised land in spite of their turning their backs on him time and again. And Paul begs us to be reconciled to God on behalf of Christ, who gave everything for us on the cross. In the gospel, we hear of a son being reconciled with his father. The story of the prodigal son, so beautifully told by Jesus and as reported to us by Luke, is familiar to many. So familiar, in fact, that many of us, and myself included, tend to walk past that painting of the story by Rembrandt every Sunday without giving it a second look. If you need to, I invite you to take a moment and look back at the wall of the confessional at the back of the church. There it is. It's really something, ain't it? To fully appreciate Jesus' intent on telling that parable, it may be useful to put ourselves in place of one of the characters. Who shall it be? The son? The older brother? The father? Let's start with the son who wanted to have everything. Wine, women, and song. He couldn't wait for dad to die, so he convinced him to give him his inheritance early so he could go his own way. And go his own way he did. Reminds me of some young people today who have ignored or even rebelled against the values of their parents and either run from home or simply moved away out of reach of their parents doesn't always go well for them, does it? The young man in question did not invest his inheritance. He spent it on entertainment and fast living until he was reduced to starvation. And that, as Jesus said, brought him to his senses. And he went home with his tail between his legs. Now we turn to the older brother, the jealous older brother. We can't really blame him for feeling that way. After all, the younger brother's behavior came with no consequences, no punishment. How does a kid get away with that? Now this might come under the heading of typical sibling rivalry or taking for granted his standing in the family as a stable, serious, 
older brother. Those of us who are born into larger families can relate to that. Let's talk about the father. This is a man who, it seems, cannot say no to his children, who gave in to his boy's request for his inheritance before his time. We could call him foolish because it more than likely was an effort to come up with enough cash to make up the funds. I would not be surprised if he had to sell some land or some sheep. How much do you suppose it cost him emotionally as well as financially? So he gives in, and the boy heads out, as they say in fairy tales, to make his way in the world. What does dad do? He keeps watch every day. And we know this because, as Jesus said, he spotted his son from a long way off. And when he sees the, boys re the boy returning, he runs. He runs to meet him. It is undignified for an old Jewish man to be running. But in his joy, he doesn't care. My boy is home. He was lost to me, but he's come back. What parent would not rejoice, would not put a cloak on him or a ring and celebrate? What parent indeed? Unfortunately, there are those who would turn their backs on their children. Sad, but true. Instead of rejoicing, they would meet the child with stern words and punishment, perhaps not even allow them to return home. And this thinking is more in line with what the older brother might have thought. You deserve consequences for your actions. Now, looking at all three of the characters in this parable, we can ask ourselves, which one do I relate to the most, at least at this time in my life? Being a father and a grandfather, I hope that for the most part, I celebrate when my children come home, not grumbling about how long, how long they've been away. Jesus wants to show us a better way, the way of God the Father. The Father in Jesus' parable shows us God's generosity and merciful love. Now, this parable was in response to the complaints of the Pharisees and the scribes that Jesus was welcoming sinners and eating with them. That's us they're talking about. We, who are constantly forgiven for our failings and always loved by God. Jesus knows our motives aren't always perfect. And he knows that in this life, things don't always work out smoothly. But he reassures us that when we return home to God, we will be welcomed and we will be celebrated. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We pray now for ourselves and for all those throughout the world 
who need God's generous mercy. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, who is always in need of God's mercy, that we may share that same mercy with others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those awaiting the relief of something new in the midst of war, violence, and inhumane actions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all wandering or displaced people, the homeless, migrants, and refugees, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who offer sanctuary to the wandering or those living on the margins, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our catechumens and candidates who are preparing to enter home in the Catholic community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working to end inequalities, especially those of hunger and famine, that they may achieve solutions as sustainably and equitably share the land and food and provide nourishment for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the group of indigenous residential school survivors, elders, knowledge keepers, and youth meeting with Pope Francis in Rome this week, may it be an experience of healing and reconciliation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our doctors, nurses, and medical researchers during this world pandemic, that through their skills and insight, many will be restored to health. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the synodal roots of the church will bear fruit in new ways of being at the service of one another at all levels of the body of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's peace and the spirit of reconciliation prevail. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that next Saturday, many from across our diocese will open their hearts to God's love and mercy and celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our families and in our parish community, especially Marion Kelly, Winnie Cole, Richard D'Souza, Hyacinth Condino, Jane Coco, Doreen McKenna, Peter Ricciardi, Mel Cervantes, Hannah Chirosi, and Everett Gino. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Joan Bonifero, Giuseppe Seferati, Congetta Ferrara, Rosemary Andrews, and Carmina Cipriano for their family and friends who grieve them with love. At this Mass, we pray pray for Mario Del Priori and Murray Urquhart. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you never fail to open your arms to us when we turn from you. Create in us forgiving and merciful hearts that can recognize the distress of others We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Alfred, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Mario del Priori and Murray Urquhart, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Mario and Murray, who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed sisters and brothers too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. With a slight bow, let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those attending Mass online, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Both of you will take this side.
I invite the minister bringing communion to the sick to please come forward. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray you bless Kathy as she brings the blessed sacrament to our sick and homebound parishioner. May the person who receives the Eucharist from the sacred altar know that we are with them in spirit and in prayer, and we bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace now, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. It is filled.